Rumour has it it's time for another episode of Walking the Wild Sign with Tom. Let's look into that. Hi, and welcome to this month's Walk in the Wild Side. Well, not quite as wild as last month. This time we visit an old estate that's still actively managed, and one of the best nature walks in the area. The land is more manicured and managed than last month, so a little more park-like, but there's a great abundance of wildlife and great scenery. Like last month's walk, I'll be showing photographs throughout the video, roughly at the point where I actually took the photograph. I think it worked quite well last time, but if you've got suggestions on how I can improve this format, then let me know in the comments below. As you know, video is not my strong point, so any helpful suggestions are welcome, and constructive criticism will be listened to. I have had an issue this month in that this video had to be done in 1080p, so unfortunately the photograph's quality isn't as it should be. The video is coming right up, and if you like it, please show some appreciation to the like button. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. I'm recording now, I think. Oh, yeah, beautiful day here. Yeah, lovely, lovely part of the world when the sun shines. We've had some week of it, some month of it, should I say. Um, I think most of the UK has. Uh, certainly not conducive to. Uh, country living, even now, well, certainly not for farmers anyway, they've been complaining. Uh, spring has barely sprung here, it's certainly got f held up in its tracks for quite a while. Uh, a lot of things just starting to come through now. Of course there wasn't a lot of insect life either because of the bad weather. And um, that's affected things, but um, not sure there's your bird life in here, you can hear them all. Interesting sight through the tree here. And that's it through there. Uh, I'll walk up through. Uh, you can't get through. I was wrong but you can see through the trees there. So that's an old mausoleum and you can see up through the entrance gates to the mausoleum. And you'll see the architecture style I was talking about. This sort of pyramid top on the base on the columns, the Palladian columns. So quite an interesting little bit of architecture there. That's part of the drive that heads on down towards where the big house is. We're going to cut through here. Okay, as we approach the main area of the park here, across this bridge, the plan is I'll be showing photographs, um, basically as I've taken them at the various points along the, the walk today. And um, so they may appear random at times, but uh, it just happens to be the location where the subject matter was when I took the photo. So let's proceed and see how you enjoy it. These are what the various big houses had before the days of fridges and freezers. And uh, this is what was known as an ice house. Now I don't know what's happened here because that fence has been put up since yesterday. So that's, uh, I wonder what's going on there. And if you zoom in, you'll see the stone work is very porous. I think it's deliberately so. Um, it's chosen to be like that. Uh, so heavily weathered rock. Coming round you'll see we've got a, a small pond here, which is part of the, the estate. Um, it's not the main uh, change the aperture, that's right. 
Yeah. So, yeah, just a little block. Um, <laughs> as you can tell, I'm not used to filming. And I don't have any filters for the camera, which is probably going to make it difficult today. But this little pond here is off to the side of the main loch. It is a nice peaceful spot. And there's quite often herns in the river bank. Um, so we'll see if we can catch them today. As we approach up this slope here, we arrive at the lake, which is totally man-made. Uh, sort of donut, rough donut shape with a big central island. You can see over there where the tree has been <laughs> cut up and <laughs> making the noise. I've got a photograph uh, of it from yesterday before they, they started to chop it up quite so much, so I'll show you that. Okay, this is the the tree where the herons are, and there is actually a bird in the nest up there. I think it's a young. It's difficult to see, and um, I'll hang about and see if I can get some shots of it. But one of the parents is on the branch of the tree over there. You can just see him, and I'll see if I can get some zoomed in footage of that. He is in all his glory, putting his feathers. And uh, we'll catch him. I think the other one's on the bank fishing actually and um, we'll get back to him soon. Uh, trying desperately to get something here, but uh, you can just make them out with the branches right across. I'll try and move. See if we can get a better view. No, I'll pass on that, I think. Well, that's interesting. We've got one looking resplendent, putting the feathers on the, on the tree, and the other one on the bank fishing. I wonder if, which one's male and which one's female. <laughs> so he's creeping very stealthily along that bank. Hopefully, I'll get a fish soon. Wow, <laughs> he's sharp eyed anyway. Got a good aim. Interest when he treads on the ferns, uh, he obviously managed to keep the noise down. If it was me trudging through there, you'd hear me a mile away. Another one. I'll get some shots now. Moorhens are usually fairly timid and they don't approach close, so it's quite unusual to get this one swimming quite nonchalantly in front of me. Maybe hoping to get fed. It's always possible.
Here we got some young ducks that are almost fully fledged by the look of it. Uh, uh, wings aren't fully developed yet though. There they go. I'll have to catch up with mum and dad. Oh, pull back, pull back. Group. Oh, view of the lake here. Yeah. We've come around. You can see the boat house in the, in the corner there. And that's where they used to bathe, apparently. Here we are in another piece of architecture on the estate. And this time, this is the curling house. You can see inside even the shells that held the curling stones. I don't know, can you see in there? Too much reflections, but yeah, the, the shells that held the curling stones are still there. Interesting stonework, as I mentioned, and also the big shells. These have obviously been imported from somewhere. I don't think they picked them up on the local beach. <laughs> I'll drop everything and try and catch this corner out. There he goes. Now, how far did he travel underwater? In these guests. No, no, no. Far more than I thought. I'm trying to anticipate it better next time. Are you going to dive again? Okay, let's see if we can anticipate him. Ah. <laughs> Here we are at the head of the lake, and uh, we'll get a view across to the house again, up here. It's going to take you stuck through the grounds there. Crucy. A fly in my eye. <laughs> it's all happening today. So, yeah, the house in the background and in the trees through there that's where the old house was located you'll notice the red door um, a lot of the estates around here have got their own colour and it would be a particular shade of red and it will be used all over the estate partly to mark what is the state property. Um, so wherever else you might see that re red, even in the local town, it means it's owned by the estate. We're going to go through onto the central island now, and I'll pick up the video again then. So here we are. Just strolling around on the internal part of the island. The noisy geese are still around. Certainly seems to be one of the more populous birds in this area. Seems to be more of them wherever I go than anything else. Well, it's nice to see a cormorant today. And obviously we got some good shots, I think, of the, the hern. Um, quite sure he was recovering from uh, a morning fishing to feed the young up in the nest. 
You can hear me, a swan busy building its nest. This pair have uh, been settling here the last couple of weeks and still in the nest building stage from uh, I was here about a week ago. So hopefully we'll see some uh, offspring. <laughs> in a, a little while and we can come back and see it there. And when, you know, here's the, the cormorant that we were filming earlier, drying his wings off. Uh, he's, he's getting nervous. I better leave him. I don't want to disturb him too much. He might take off, though. No? Nah, I won't. Leave. Interestingly, the swan there arrived to chase off the cormorant. Decided he, he didn't want him fishing on his territory. And uh, now he's gone over into one of the centre islands and he's. he's uh, He's climbing up the tree. Uh, I've seen him before uh, sitting on the very top of the tree, so that's probably where he's headed. It's an absolute paradise here, uh, a wildlife haven. Uh, whoever built this was obviously a uh, nature lover. Having a bit of difficulty there today and trying to get good shots and trying to film at the same time. Uh, certainly using the same camera for, bo for both uh, isn't feasible. So I, I need to try and separate the two tasks, I think. I'm going to try and get better images while I'm actually trying to film. I'll give some consideration to that going forward. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, I'll try and make them a monthly trip out in the countryside and I'll show you some of the areas where I know uh, there's good wildlife and where I've got some of my better shots in the past. Certainly the first time I came here there was a lot of activity and uh, I was quite surprised by it. That was uh, prior to lockdown, prior to all the Covid carry on. So uh, I have been back once since just to check that it was open and that everything was as I had found it last time and it was. So it was good to get back today and, and get some photographs and a little bit of video. We'll go back to the studio now and pull that together and uh, see what I can make of it. So hopefully that'll be something that interests you and you'll enjoy. Bye for now.